Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you an atomic lock-free smart pointer implemented in C. Yes, in C. How can we even have a shared pointer in C? Well, the same way we have it in C++. So what do we have in C++ is some variable on the stack and when we clone it, uh, we increment number of references to pointed object and when we when it goes out of scope when, when any of those clone variables gets out of scope we decrement number of references and when the last reference is released um, the object is destroyed so it doesn't work very well with threads because smart pointers are not uh, you know shared pointer is not very atomic however there is a variant you can put shared pointer into atomic and say atomic shared pointer in uh, earlier version of C++, uh, you could have uh, atomic load and store for shared pointers, but they were implemented using spin locks, at least in Visual Studio. So what I'm proposing is a uh, spin lock free, uh, lock free, uh, wait free. I'm not sure about this lock free, wait free. Anyway, this is my approach. Uh, you decide how free it is, and I'm just going to show you. So this is an example code that is a user code. So the user needs to include this empty arc. I borrow the name arc from Rust. I, I really like this arc. You know, I really like Rust. So arc means, you know, atomic reference count. Don't confuse it with atomic shared, shared pointer because a shared pointer on its own in C++ is atomic reference count. Um, so, so my arc is actually atomic arc. So it's atomic, atomic reference count. So it's atomic load and stuff. Let's see how this looks like. So it's useful when you have something shared. So you have this empty arc, which is global in this case. It's a global variable. So multiple threads can access this global variable. And accessing is okay for reading, but let's say one thread wants to change this variable. So if this variable is like, this is an arc, a pointer to a data. You cannot really change the content of the data because that would be a race condition. But what you can do is you can swap pointer to a new pointer. So you can copy the, the data uh, into a new structure, change it in this new local copy, and then swap the pointer to this new local copy. And this way you have like a, you know, wait free, lock free update. Now, in order to do the swap, obviously, you need to swap the pointer. But here, it's not just one pointer. It's a reference counted pointer. So there is a pointer and there is reference count. And actually, I borrowed the idea from C++, from Boost. Um, I don't have reference count. I have control block <laughs> with destructor. So user has to supply a destruction method, a deleter. In C, <laughs> yes. So why not? <laughs> because I'm little crazy. The reason for it is so that you can, for example, use this in your kernel mode code if you want. Um, so here we go. The destructor for my, uh, let's start with the type. So my type is foo. It's a structure with two variables, x and y, two integers. That's it. That's my, that's my data type. And I'm going to be sharing this, you know, globally. Now, a pointer to a pointer to the foo will be shared globally. So something needs to allocate that foo and something needs to destroy the foo. So we start with the destroying foo. So you can see that I'm going to be using malloc and free for those because this is C. Uh, malloc and free is not available in kernel mode. You can replace that with whatever other kernel um, allocation is there. Maybe you have a pool or whatever. And you know, this is for Windows uh, kernel development, but I'm sure you can replace certain functions that I use for Windows and with some Linux or for Mac or whoever. So anyway, this is for Windows. So this example is not a kernel mode program, right? It's just normal application, normal console application. But it, it, this arc itself is not going to use any CRT, okay? So we are using here in our example free and late, early on we use malloc, right? To, 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 re to destroy uh, memory that we allocated. Again, you can use some, some kernel mode free and some kernel, kernel mode allocate to do that. Now, we just zero those, those two, two values there. 
Now they they are they are not really pointers. They are special, you know, because of the way this thing works. I had to use 64-bit integers, and I had to ensure the array of two 64-bit integers, uh, you know, is homogeneous with this arc structure. So, so yeah, these are just integers. But anyway, it doesn't matter. So let's further let's go further down. And the new. What does the new do? So this is our constructor. So it takes uh, two parameters for, for my uh, structure. So my structure has X and Y. So we want to initialize this new structure. We want to create a new structure foo, new foo, and put X and Y in this foo. And we want to put it in, uh, in arc. So this new foo is equivalent to make shared in C++. So make shared takes uh, parameters uh, or initialization list of parameters for the constructor, it creates new object and puts it into shared pointer. So this is what this is doing. Uh, so it's kind of a long story, like create an object and put it in a shared pointer, so create a control block as well. So because uh, all allocators here are on the user side, so user has to use malloc or something, so control block needs to be uh, initialized, um, needs to be um, allocated by the user. So the only thing you need to do as a user is to give some space in memory for it so size of your data so that's that would be expected c style allocation of memory for my foo and then as i say a control block needs to be allocated by by the user so you can use malloc size of ntr control block this is how you get a control block of type pntr control block why ntr because this, again this is for windows uh, you know api whatsoever so now, the next thing you do, you zero and set some variables in your foo, right? So that's standard thing. So in this constructor, I allocate memory first. I don't do this un until I have all the memory that I need to have allocated. So this could be done earlier here, but you know, if this allocation fails, then why am I doing this work? Uh, I'm using go to bail, so I defined number of bail labels. And depending on to which failure happened, we like how far we got, uh, we bail in different numbers. So this is kind of like old school, you know, go to line number, and you know, this is how we wrap, you know, unwind the stack. So if we manage to, if we just got the null in the beginning, then we go here. If we allocated some memory, then we need to free it, you know, and so on. So if we fail to allocate memory, then we still do nothing. If we allocated this memory here, but we fail this one, we free this one and so on. So that's quite efficient way of bailing out of the function. And pretty nice, I say. You know, it's pretty nice. It's anyway. Let's let's go further down. We have uh, anti arc new. So this is actually you know the, the make shared thing. Um, so we already have the foo created, we have this p foo, we have this control block uh, allocated. Now control block needs a destruction function, so this function here will just initialize this, um, this shared pointer uh, with this control block allocated by us, but with the data for control block and we'll put one reference count after it will finish. And the result will be in the p arc, so that's our pointer to a variable that will receive our shared pointer. So this 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 is filling in this p arc, right? And this p arc is our variable. Now let's see how this foo new is used. So we have main here and in in main we have two foo thread one, foo thread two. So this is just a poor man's thread. So there is no thread here. It's just we're just showing what will happen on in one kind of situation and what happens in other situations. So in the situation of store and load. And our, our store would look like this. So first of all, and let's look at the global. So the global is initialized with null, right? It's, it's a null pointer to, to data and null pointer to control block. So it's a null. Uh, that's the beginning of our journey. And we need to create some new foo and then uh, assign uh, this new foo to this global variable. So here we create the new foo. So this is foo new. This is our make shared thing. And we can see that the, uh, you know, the, the result is assigned to this foo here, right? So you can see that new foo was taking a variable, this p arc here, 
and this PRC is, is a pointer to this variable. So you see that same as in C++, my variable is on the stack. And we say that smart pointer, uh, you know, takes ownership of the object. And then when the scope uh, ends, it destroys. Because this is C, we have to do it manually. And there is anti arc drop. Anti arc drop does the thing. Now, anti arc drop is a smart reference count drop. So it, this drop here will know that it doesn't actually delete the object. It only removes one reference, right? So it does the same thing as smart pointer. Now, when you want to create a copy of smart pointer, a copy constructor, there will be a case for that as well, but we don't do that here because what happens is we created our, our first initial object and we own it. We own it with this, with this foo. And here we say we don't own it anymore. And here we set the global foo to this foo. But when we do that, it's another, it's another arc, right? So it has to clone inside, uh, so it has a second reference to it. So the global arc will have a second reference to it while we have this first reference to it. So there's two references after this atomic store. Now, atomic store is a magical function, which is log-free function. And what it does, it um, replaces this global variable g foo with these new foo values, values from new foo, but it does it in atomic way without, um, you know, without any locks. And what is important here is that uh, the old value needs to be disposed. So this is kind of transaction, you know, it's a transaction of fetch the value that is currently in the global full, uh, re reduce reference count, uh, destroy object if this is the last one, and replace that global value with the new full and yeah, an increment reference count for the new foo. And the question is, can you do all that with a lock? Well, you can. <laughs> if you do a little bit of lock-free gymnastics, everything is possible. And, um, and yeah, code looks crazy. <laughs> but I made it actually look interesting and we'll see in a moment. Okay, so that's our thread one. So a thread one created foo assigned to the global variable our foo and then this this disposed of of its own foo so there is only one reference after this finishes which is global reference so this next thing is thread two right so thread two could have actually been uh, running in parallel with thread one and could for example load null because initially there was null so there's actually two states here initially the G global foo is null and after this store, it's some value that we created, right? So, you know, so we, we could, uh, we could, uh, this load could load the null or could uh, load the new value, right? But because I'm running them sequentially and not in parallel, then this one will load the new value, right? So for now, I only have this, this example. And obviously we need some tests uh, and some actual, you know, concurrent tests so that we can prove that this is actually working. But um, so far, I just did the thing in debugger. So in debugger, you can actually drag the current position of, uh, of your inst where the instruction, where the next instruction is. You can drag it to the beginning of a, of, lo of a load or store and see what will happen. Simulate that second thread is going to do the same thing now. Like you're, you're, you're somewhere, you're, your, your current position in this function was there. And then you can move the cursor and say, OK, but what happens if other thread reaches this point, right? Um, so, yeah, but this is very actually difficult to test. So the, the test that you can do is kind of random, you know, thread doing things and see if that crashes. <laughs> so what, what do we do in thread two? We load, atomic load. So atomic load takes this global variable foo and loads into local variable foo a clone. It, it loads a clone, right? So if, if there was some, uh, until, until now we know that there was one reference count was one of these foods that we created previously because we passed one reference in this store to, to global variable and, and the other one we disposed. So there was two, but we disposed the second one, uh, the, the, this local one we disposed. So we only have the global one. And here we are loading that global reference. So obviously 
This thread has reference and global variable has reference, so there has to be two references. So this load needs to increment references, so it clones it clones this foo. Next, uh, what we do is, well, we do some work with the foo, right? We do some work with the foo. For example, this print, we do the print. Some work. Uh, the interesting thing about print is we'll switch context, it will take time. So if if this wasn't done this way, if there was like a big lock around the global foo, then this whole print would block the whole execution. If, 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 there, if this was run on multiple threads, then obviously they would serialize because of this print. But, but because this is atomic and there is no lock here, uh, you know, we, we just print some value from some moment of time. Important is that we are printing consistent value. We didn't like, uh, well, we, we printing it from some object, but uh, you know, uh, what is important is that this object didn't wasn't destroyed in the meantime, right? So we're not printing, we're not accessing here, you know, object after use after free, right? We don't do use after free. And then we release at the end reference that we got in the load. So it is important to note that we always do this anti arc drop on local local arcs. This is local variable. So, so it's like if we define a shared pointer, then this is where the structure of shared pointer will be called. So we need to call manually in C, right? So we just call this the structure manually in C at the end. And after that, there is only one reference left in the global foo. If I go back next, what happens is I do atomic store of a null foo. Null foo is zeros. So what happens with this guy is in global foo until now we had one reference to this foo left and we could still borrow it by loading it. But now we want to finish our program and we want to destroy everything. So how we do it properly is because this is global variable, we should not be using this drop, right? We know this is the last reference and we know that this drop would still work, but um, we don't want to use drop because this is not correct uh, semantically. Uh, this global foo, as you could see here, is is a volatile variable, meaning that should be, you know, maybe accessed by multiple threads. So it should not be accessed by this one because this one doesn't take volatile pointer. For example, compiler will tell you that you're trying to drop to call function uh, the, the parameter doesn't match, right? The parameter is not volatile. And here it will match. And it is good uh, that compiler says that because you should not be doing that because this one will drop this, 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 this function, but it is not atomic operation. Whereas this, and, and when you work with a volatile um, variables, uh, then, you know, you, you, should, you should use atomic operations or, or, or locks, but if we want to do lock free. So, you should work with, uh, you know, you, you work with volatile, so you should work with atomic operations. So this is atomic store, and we store in atomic fashion zero, meaning that the previous value will magically drop itself uh, after we do this store. Okay, so we have two operations, load and store, right? These are the, the, the interesting operations that I can talk about a little bit, uh, how they are implemented here, uh, how are they so atomic? But before I get there, maybe I should explain a little bit how is this arc implemented. So this anti arc is not atomic by any chance. This is just a normal shared pointer, right? This is normal shared pointer containing, um, you know, pointer to object and pointer to control block. And inside the control block, you have reference count and the structure. I can show you that. Let's let's look at this anti arc first. So there's only one header, that's the whole thing. It fits in this guy, it's just that. <laughs> and um, yeah, so so this is the header. And here's our anti arc. As you see, this is two long 64 values. This is deliberate because I have to fit it in long 64, you know, in, in, in long 128, right? It has to be the same as long 128. We have control block and data. Now, um, control block contains a volatile reference count. So it's volatile, we should use an interlocked. And then um, destroy context and destroy. So this is like a closure because I, I put here context in, in case you, it's not just a function, but maybe a closure with some data. So you have data here, function here to destroy, to destroy the arc, right? 
Um, so this context could have something like if it's like if you allocate object uh, from some free list, maybe you want to return it to free list. Uh, maybe there is some you know extra data. Let's let's continue. There is some macros that you don't really need to use besides maybe p data and p control block. Um, yeah, this p control block and p data we use them in the destructor as you have seen, right? So this is to access those um, those two values, this long sixty four, as pointers because we know this is a pointer to this uh, control block, and this is a pointer to your user type. So you can see that the uh, ntr p data takes your user type as parameter. And uh, this allows you to, uh, you know, you just use that with your foo, and, and this is how you can just access directly your members of your type. And then p control block allows you to access members of control block in, 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 in smart pointer. So, for example, reference code. But uh, user wouldn't be using that. User wouldn't be using that for any purpose. Unless you want to, uh, you know, tinker with with uh, reference count. You shouldn't because that will break everything. So this is C. You can break everything because this is C, but uh, let's not break everything. So yeah, so we have some uh, function to to initialize this control block and uh, you know whatsoever to initialize this arc. We can just see that that is initialized. We have a function to clone. This is just regular copy constructor of smart pointer. So you have uh, the resulting uh, smart pointer and the source smart pointer, and we're copying uh, this point p pointer into p result. We're copying. So copying in this case means we increment reference count. So we use interlocked increment, and this ntr per ref count will give us a pointer to ref count in this. You know, it will do the magic to get through control block to reference to ref count, and then we just copy those values control block and that. So that, that's how we clone. Um, then uh, there is a drop reference and drop data. These are just internal stuff for, for, for drop. If you look at the drop, drop itself calls drop reference and drop data. Uh, it was needed, I'll show you later, uh, to separate the drop reference from drop data. So drop reference only reduces reference by one. I'm returning previous value of reference. So if reference count was two and you called drop reference, then it will return two, even though the current reference count is one, right? Because this, this will allow me to distinguish that zero, for example, zero means it, it was never there. So I, I want to have zero reserved for the null. Uh, pointer that has some some something in there will never be null, right? Um, so for drop data, I'm just saying if this was the last reference, so this is old reference count, then we call this destroy and so on. Now um, we have is equal, it compares control blocks. So um, two pointers, two smart pointers are pointing to the same data if the control blocks are the same, because there is no need to compare the pointers. Um, and the reason for that is you shouldn't have two smart pointers with two different control blocks pointing to the same object. That would mean that you did something very bad, <laughs> right? Like, this is not going to work. OK, I have this anti-arc exchange. So this is atomic exchange, but this is not really going to help you with anything. It's, it's, it's not like load store. So if you can use that for a variable that you, it's like one time, one element Q. So one thread can exchange this element with the new value and another thread can exchange it uh, with with the null to 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 get uh, the last value right and this way uh, you know these threads could exchange between themselves uh, just one element but uh, yeah so that's that's for that but that's that's not really that's not that's not that's atomic but it's and it's safe thread safe and so on but it's not gonna be useful because after this operation, of course, if, if you share this global variable and you exchange, you're gonna you're always gonna put a new value there. So, if you wanna share the same value all the time, that's this is not gonna be useful. So I had to come up with some solution, right? So I have this um, atomic begin and atomic commit, but I'm gonna look into that in a moment with you. Let's just look at the star and load. 
So as you can see, um, there is the store has old chunk and new chunk here defined. Okay, so these are local local smart pointers. And this is the global pointer to global smart pointer or shell pointer. And then this is the value, the, the lo uh, local on stack, the user value, right? The user created this 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 shared pointer. And he's pa they passing this shared pointer to us and saying we want to store this in the global value here. So what we do first, we clone. We clone this pointer that user gives us into a new new pointer. So we want to make sure that we make a copy on a, a smart pointer provided by user. We copy construct it first, right? Then the old chunk uh, is what we're going to receive in atomic begin. So atomic begin begins a transaction of replacement uh, of the value. So it's a transaction. So it's it's kind of like a lock <laughs> but it's not <laughs> it's, it's you know a lock free programming is it's lock free it's it, i don't know if you can make it more lock free but from like you, you always look at the performance perspective and the context switching so this is context switch free yeah there is no context switching here um unless windows decides to switch spuriously but um this code doesn't switch context right so that's one thing second thing um this is just to swap you know a shared pointer with another shared pointer so um you know it, it, we, we're not putting a lock around the you know all the big use of 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 of, of the data right so the shared pointer points to some data so Someone could put just a lock uh, in a function that, that that locks in the whole function, and and you know, and, and that 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 would be very bad. That would be lock. So here we we not doing that. We just providing a function to store a user user pointer into global pointer, shared pointer. Now uh, another thing that we don't want to do here to be lock free and wait free is in this transaction we do not want to do anything. So we want to just do some atomic swap, swaps here and there, a few swaps, blah, blah, blah. And then that's it. We don't want to call any destructors as well. So if reference count go, goes to zero, we don't want to call destructor, right? We want to wait with that for later. So let's see what atomic begin does. Or maybe, maybe let's look at this code again. Uh, so we clone the, the, uh, the, point, the pointer that user gives us to this new chunk. Um, then we begin the transaction. So begin will take from the store the value that's currently there and place into into the old chunk. Like the, the ownership of the value will go from the global pointer to this local on, on stack pointer. Right? So this this ownership partially goes there because this is the begin. And then the second will be commit, but between begin and commit, we have this. And this is because we need to drop the reference count on control block, which is pointed by the thing that we just got in the, you know, compare and sub operation. So it's not really possible to compare and swap a pointer and at the same time in decrement the reference count on integer pointed that by this pointer. That will be difficult, I think. I don't know if that's possible, but you can definitely, you can definitely do it as a second instruction. You can decrement the reference count. And the next thing we do is we commit. So we take this new chunk that we got, uh, you know, we, we cloned it. We cloned this user provided um, pointer, and we put it into the global variable. So this whole thing happens in atomic fashion. These three, three lines, three instructions happen in, in atomic fashion. So when we do begin, uh, any thread that tries to do this store uh, will, will bounce off begin and we'll, we'll just, well, we'll have to wait until the commit happens, right? Uh, so we can see that load does the same thing. Load also begins and commits. So we can see that store and load are implemented as begin and, and commit. 
in case of load, we commit some slightly different thing, right? So in case of store, you see, I told you that the, the drop doesn't happen within the transaction. So we, we don't block the whole, uh, you know, transaction for the, with, 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 with some terribly long, uh, difficult uh, code for destruction, right? Destruction code can do a lot of things, like for example, close file. That's not nice. You don't want to do it under the, the lock of transaction. We said lock free, so this is we do, like we don't want to do that. So the idea is that this is not going to un be done under the lock implementation in the Visual Studio implementation um, of the atomic uh, load and store for shared pointer. I have seen that there is a spin lock, and I think it's a global spin lock. So that's terrible, <laughs> and the destruction happens there of the object, which is. I have doubts if it's nice. <laughs> so this 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 code here doesn't do such bad things. Okay, it, destruction happens outside of transaction. So transaction covers only swap of some integers back and forth, and that's it. That's all transactions. Few integers swapped. That's it. Uh, in the load, we do the same thing. We swap few integers, right? So we only have old chunk. So when we begin the transaction, we get the old value. Right, and uh, we clone that old value into result, so to, so to the user, and then when we commit, we just put it back, right? We put back the old value. So you can guess that this begin and uh, commit it does something similar to exchange. So what I said about exchange is that exchange is stealing value from the storage, but when it is stealing value from the storage, it's putting something else in there. And then, you know, it's the value that everyone wanted to share, is, it, 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 you don't actually share the value because the value is only like, only one thread has the value, that's it. No one can see it. You know, the value can be seen only by one thread. So what's the, there is no sharing here. No, no, it's not shared pointer anymore because even though, you know, this, the structure is there, it, is, it cannot be shared. So this atomic begin and commit does something around this exchange okay it does something around so let's see what we're doing i define this special chunk okay special special chunk and special chunk just uses uh, values one and zero for control block pointer and for data pointer so because they're integers i can put whatever integer i like and i decided that one is a perfect integer and such a combination one zero is not possible if you have a valid pointer and it is also not a null pointer so null pointer would be zero zero because null pointer would have no control block and no pointer um, valid pointer would never have a pointer to control block that's one one is it's not a valid pointer right to control block so this is special chunk okay so any thread that wants to do begin has to spin in this while loop and there is a compare exchange but we check first before we do compare exchange if the old chunk is special chunk. So if you're trying to exchange special chunk for special chunk, if the chunk is already special chunk in the in this global store, then we keep spinning. Until this old chunk is no no longer a special chunk. And it becomes not so special chunk at the moment when we commit. So we can see that when we commit, we do this compare exchange in the global store. We put back some we put some value in that replaces this special chunk, right? And the value that we put in depends if it's a load or store. <laughs> so if it's store, we put a new value. And if it's load, we just put the old value. We just put it back. So we, we kind of take it so take it from there and put it back. So what, what actually happens? You can imagine you have a you have a bowl, right? So this is my bowl. And now um, there is some 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 pointer in there, and uh, what I'm doing in 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 uh, begin, I just take it out, okay? I take it out, and uh, at the same time I put some you know something something else in there. I just put some some doomy thing preventing other up someone else to 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 take. It's, I'm blocking it. I'm just just covering this bowl. And uh, next, what I think is do is I have this. I 
decrement reference count on this, if that was the last one, then I, I just remember the reference count. I don't do anything, I just remember it was the last one. And then, for example, I replace whatever is inside here with something new. Oh, here we go, I have something new, I put it in and I put something new, right? If I do load, I take this out, okay? I put this magic thing in there to block access. Now, I copy, I clone this, I make a clone of that thing, okay? And this is my clone. And then I put this thing back. Oh. And, you know, that, that's how it works, right? So, that's quite, quite straightforward and simple solution. Um, so the thing that we are sharing, it's it's kind of kind of taking it out of this variable and putting it back. <laughs> so, so that's how it works. Now you can see these operations use um, atomic operations. So we use compare exchange, compare exchange. That that's all. That's Windows, um, you know, and WinNT header. There is this compare exchange. I can show you which exact met function it is. It is interlocked compare exchange 128. There is such a function in WinNT, if you wonder, compare exchange 128. And this function is designed in such a fashion that you can, it takes actually two parameters for, for, for two values. You can, you can pass two values, right? So it, it's, it's, it's two long 64 uh, integers to put there. All right. So that, that's my um, C atomic shirt pointer lock free. And it's written in a way that you can actually understand. Because why shouldn't it be? It's, it's C, it's, it should be easy. <laughs> no? Thank you for watching.